Hey everybody, welcome to tutorial 27. This video is going to be a little different than usual. I'm going to show you how you can help contribute to the development of SuperCollider using Git and GitHub. Full disclosure, for all the SuperCollider users out there who are primarily programmers dabbling in music, or if you're a regular GitHub user, then there's a good chance this video won't teach you anything that you don't already know. I'm imagining this tutorial is much more useful for users who are primarily musicians dabbling in programming. And if the idea of helping to develop SuperCollider seems overwhelming, remember that development contributions come in many different forms. It doesn't necessarily mean a deep dive into C++ or fixing elusive bugs. Rather, it might be as simple as just fixing a typo in one of the help files, or maybe refining a code example in the documentation that isn't quite as clear or instructive as perhaps it could be. These are examples of bite-sized, helpful changes that you can propose that don't require an extensive programming background. And as for why you should consider helping with development, it's my opinion that having more active users making good faith contributions means SuperCollider becomes more robust, more user-friendly, and has better prospects for longevity. So remember, no contribution is too small and every little bit helps. If you're not familiar with Git and GitHub, you're not alone because I am a relatively new user myself. In fact, to prepare for this video, I sat down with one of the SuperCollider developers, Brian Heim, and he very graciously walked me through the process from start to finish. So big thank you to Brian for the help, and I'm very pleased to be able to pass that knowledge onto you in hopes that you'll put it to good use. Out of necessity, this tutorial was developed with macOS in mind, but I'm cautiously optimistic that most, if not all, concepts can be easily extrapolated and applied to other operating systems. The first step, is to identify some kind of contribution you'd like to make. So before making this video, I rummaged through a lot of the help files and noticed that in the guide file titled glossary, in the entry for server, the word C accidentally appears twice in a row in the last sentence. So let's fix it. In this video, we're gonna be working at the command line a fair amount. So find your operating system's command line interface and open it up. On Mac OS, this is called terminal located in your Applications folder and in the Utilities subfolder. If you've never used the command line before, think of it as a text-based interface for using your computer. Next, make sure you have Git installed. In short, Git is version control software that helps track changes during the process of software development. It's free and open source. To see if you've already got Git installed, type git version and hit enter. If you see a version number, you're good to go. If Git is not installed, this action may trigger an installation prompt that you can follow, or alternatively, you can go to git-scm.com downloads and follow the instructions there. You'll also need a GitHub account, which is also free. GitHub is a website that integrates with Git and allows people from all over the world to collaborate on software development projects. Once you've created an account, log in, the SuperCollider GitHub organization is here at github.com slash supercollider. And the main SuperCollider code repository, or repo for short, is here at github.com slash supercollider slash supercollider. In terms of the big picture, what you're going to do is make a copy of this repo for yourself, edit that copy locally on your personal machine, and then request to have your changes merged into the main SuperCollider project. So the next step is to decide where to store this local copy of the SuperCollider project. It doesn't really matter where it goes, as long as you're aware of where you're putting it. I'm going to go to my home folder and then into documents and make a new folder called GitHub. And then at the command line, navigate into this folder. We can do this with a change directory command, which is CD space, and then the absolute path to this folder. Now, if you're not sure what that is, a quick option is to just click and drag the folder into the command line and then hit enter. If you like, you can follow this up with a pwd command, which is print working directory. This is not a necessary step, but it's a good command to be familiar with, useful for confirming your current location within a hierarchy of folders. Back on GitHub, we're going to make a copy of the SuperCollider repo for ourselves. And this is called forking. On the SuperCollider repo page, click the button in the upper right that says fork. This'll take a few seconds. And when it's done, 
GitHub should automatically take you to the page for the fork you just created. And for me, that's github.com slash Eli Fieldsteel slash Super Collider. So we've got a copy of the repo on our GitHub page. Now we need to make yet another copy that resides locally on our personal computer. This is called cloning. And at the command line, it's git clone, the URL to the fork you just created. So just copy and paste this from the browser. Then one more space and dash dash recursive. And this last bit ensures that all of the submodules in the Super Collider repo get cloned as well. Hit enter. This process should take about a minute or so. So just hang out while it works. I'm gonna fast forward here. So once it's done, you'll be able to find the local clone wherever you decided to store it. Back to the command line, cd super collider forward slash to navigate into this repo itself. And now sort of a technical step, we want to manage the remote repos on GitHub that this local repo is tracking so that it stays up to date with other developments. So first the command git remote dash v. And you should see something like this, which means the local repo is tracking your personal fork as a remote. What you want to do is add the original repo as a second remote by convention called upstream. And we do this with git remote add upstream and then the link to the main super collider repo, which you can just type it in or again, just copy and paste from the browser. Now git remote dash V once again, and we can confirm that we've successfully added the main repo as a remote. With that step completed, the next sensible thing to do is update your fork. Now, if this is your first time doing all of this, forking, cloning, etc., then this next step is probably not necessary since you've just now forked and so your copy is almost certainly up to date. Updating your fork is a much more important and relevant thing to do if, for example, you forked a year ago and haven't touched it since then, in which case probably a lot of changes have happened since then and your fork is out of date. But no matter the case, updating your fork is a good thing to know how to do, and it goes like this. Git fetch upstream, which downloads everything from the upstream remote. Git checkout develop, this makes sure we're on the correct branch of the project. And then git pull upstream develop, which brings your develop branch up to date with the main repo's develop branch. If you see a warning here, you can optionally follow up with git config pull.ff only which is the option that Brian recommends to avoid accidentally updating your branch with changes from someone else's copy. I want to take this moment to point out that on the main repo page, there's a wiki. And at the bottom of that wiki, a bunch of links, one of which is titled Creating Pull Requests. And this page contains a lot of the same information I'm covering here, like forking, cloning, keeping your fork up to date, etc. So it's a good resource to keep in mind. We're almost ready to correct that typo, but if we run git branch, we can see that we're currently on the develop branch. And this is not where we want to be for making a simple typo correction. So just a quick discussion about branches and how they work. On the main repo page on GitHub, develop is the default branch of the project. And conceptually, develop is the place where all of the primary, substantial, big picture things take place for improving, evolving the platform, and creating the next stable release of Super Collider. But if all changes took place on this one branch, big, medium, and small, it would just be a big mess. It's not a very clean way of working. And so the accepted practice is to create a new branch specifically for your contribution. And in fact, if you scroll down on this list of branches, you can see that there are already several topic branches dedicated for individual purposes. So back at the command line, we create a new branch with git checkout dash b, and then the name of the branch we're creating. So this needs to be a single string with no spaces. And by convention, encouraged by the SuperCloud developers, this should start with topic slash, followed by some meaningful descriptor of why this branch is going to exist. So I'll say topic slash glossary dash typo, and hit enter. Run git branch again, and you can see we've created a new branch and switched onto it. All right, time to fix that typo. Somehow we've got to locate the relevant file in the local repo, in this case, the glossary guide document. That could take a while if we just mindlessly poke around. So one thing you can do is go to the project wiki 
and go to the link for project structure at the bottom. This gives a hierarchical overview of where project assets are located. So the help source directory contains all the help docs. Alternatively, since we're editing a help document, we could view that document in the SuperCollider IDE, scroll all the way to the bottom, and there's a path that contains information on the location of this file. So we can see it should be in help source slash guides. So let's track it down. And here it is. And we just want to open this in some text editor. Really, any text editor is fine. You could even do this in SuperCollider. So we make the change and save the file. At the command line, run git status. And this confirms that we have, in fact, made changes to our branch, specifically to the glossary.sc help file. So the first step is to add this change to the staging area, which we do with git add. And then you know, we could just put the local path to the file we just changed. So that would be help source slash guides slash glossary.se help. But that's a lot to type. And you can imagine this could be really tedious if your contribution involves multiple files. So instead, we can take advantage of the fact that add is recursive by default. And so we can simply add a parent folder like help source or even simpler git add period. And this period refers to the current working directory. In, in other words, the entire repository and the add command propagates through the entire project structure. Git status again, and that change is now green, which means it is staged for inclusion in the next commit. So after we're done adding changes, we're ready to commit those changes. Essentially, a commit is like saving a snapshot of the state of the repository at a point in time. So that command is git commit dash m to include a commit message. And then the commit message itself in quotes, and similar to naming a branch, this should be a short meaningful message that describes the nature of the commit. So specifically, Brian recommends the following convention. The project component you're working on, so in this case, that would be docs or maybe help docs or help source or something like that, colon, and then a short descriptor phrase as if it were a simple computer command. So I'd go with fix glossary typo. Run that. And then git status confirms we've got no more changes to commit. From here, we want to push this new branch to our personal fork on GitHub so that this new branch is visible there as well. We do that with git push dash dash set dash upstream origin, which means the local clone will track changes in your remote fork. And then finally, the name of the branch, which in this case is topic slash glossary dash typo. Run this line, which takes a few seconds. And once it's done, go back to your fork on GitHub and you should be able to see confirmation of your recent push right at the top. Now, usually this happens pretty quickly, but in some cases it might take a minute or so to show up. The final step is to make a pull request, which essentially means asking the SuperCollider developers to incorporate your changes into the develop branch so that ultimately your contributions will be reflected in the next release. Click this green button that says compare and pull request and complete the form on this page. In particular, the purpose and motivation of the pull request. In this case, it's just a simple typo, so something brief is fine. Though I imagine for more substantial contributions, you might wanna put some detailed information here. For types of changes, delete the lines that aren't applicable. This is strictly a documentation change and not any of these three things. And then check off the to-do list by putting a lowercase x in each set of brackets. So we've updated documentation and this pull request is ready for review. And even though this change doesn't involve any code testing, it's recommended that you check off items that don't apply just to show that, you know, all tests are passing because there's no code to be tested. Preview your PR if you like, and if it looks good, click on create pull request. This completes the process of initiating a pull request. So from here, at some point, a developer will come along and review it. Now that might be a couple minutes, but more realistically, probably a day or two at least. But you can come back to this PR page whenever you like, and it'll give you live status updates, including tags that were added, comments, and whether the PR was approved or not. I'm gonna 
jump forward in time here just to show you that this PR was approved. And that's all there is to it. As a reminder, the wiki page on the Super Collider repo is a good source of information for making contributions and otherwise interacting with the SC community. So I know this tutorial topic is a bit far from the usual stuff we talk about, like signal processing and UGENs and stuff, but nonetheless, I hope you find it useful. So the next time you come across something in Super Collider that looks like it could be fixed or improved, I encourage you to consider making a pull request of your own. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.